Immutable data structures are data structures that can't be modified. Suppose we want a simple list that has an add method. If the add method modifies the existing list, then it's a mutable data structure. The values can be changed or mutated. But instead, we could have a list where the add method returns a new list that contains all the old items plus the new one. This time, the old list still exists, unchanged from how it was before. It's immutable. It doesn't change. If data structures are immutable, then they can, if you design them to, share data. So if our immutable list is a linked list, then we can add an item at the head of the list by creating a new head node that points to the old list as its tail. The old list still exists, unchanged, and the new list shares many of its nodes with the old list. And we could call add a second or third time on the old list to create more immutable lists that all share the same tail. The lists are all there, they're all correct, and they're all immutable. They just overlap quite a lot. It's safe for them to share data because they're immutable. If these were mutable lists, then modifying the last element of the third list would also change the last element of the other two lists. And someone thinking these were three distinct lists might not expect that. One place where you've already seen immutable data structures in this course is in the version control system git. The snapshot of your working directory that it stores as a commit is an immutable tree structure. But create a new commit and a new snapshot, and the new immutable tree will share as many nodes as it can with the previous tree. And this makes sense. We want commits to be immutable because they're a marker of what's happened in the past. And when we make a new commit, we want to keep the old commits intact because it's part of the job of a version control system to keep that record of what happened in the past. And sharing nodes between the commits helps to keep the data size small and manageable. 